by reference by practitioner <laughs> Carol Ch Campbell and the talk will be my creative intention the, the right so we'll have a talk by Rev um, practitioner Carol Campbell my own words of welcome. We have two newcomers this morning. Very special welcome to you. Hope to see you again. And to those of you who are with us online, you know you're always in our hearts. Wish you were here. To see this beautiful, beautiful, listen, the Poinciana's are just glorious. Yeah, they're just gorgeous. They're just, you can't even describe them. They're so gorgeous. Anyway, my talk. My, I titled this morning, What's Your Intention? You know those back in the day when uh, you used to have to ask the father to date the girl, you know? Mm -hmm. And his first question would be, what's your intention? Mm -hmm. Okay. A few years ago, while I was visiting Greece, I decided to take a walk through the old part of Athens. This is the picturesque postcard image you always see in tourist advertisements. Narrow, hilly cobblestone streets overflowing with an explosion of vibrant, blooming bogan villas cascading over step terraces that lead to apartments where the front door is literally on the street. Now these apartments usually shared a clothesline strung overhead across the street between the apartments. To me, it spoke to community, a shared experience of neighborliness, which is uncommon in most urban centers. On my walk this particular morning, I met a lady hanging out clothes from her balcony on the shared clothesline. We greeted each other warmly with bright morning smiles, me in my limited grief saying hello, she, in her limited English, responded. We continued a conversation for a good 10 minutes. Me in English, she in Greek. <laughs> Neither of us having a clue what the other one was saying. No joke. <laughs> However, our tone and demeanor spoke to friendly conversation. When we each intuitively knew that the conversation was over, we waved goodbye to each other she went on with her chores, I went on with my walk. Now, there was no mistake that a connection had been made that transcended the spoken words. I thought a lot about that encounter because it really clarified for me that the words we speak are not nearly so important as the way in which we speak. How was it possible for two people to have a meaningful conversation in two different languages, languages that bear no resemblance to each other, and where neither of us was fluent in the other. I'll tell you how. We simply understood the intention behind the words. We felt each other's energy as love and friendship. Our intention for a shared experience that would leave the other feeling embraced and warmly welcomed. Isn't it true that communication is really about feeling, that feeling place, speaking from a heart-centered space in the universal language of love? The brief encounter underscored the truth that we are all connected and much more alike then we are different. How much easier our lives would be if we let go of the ego and simply embrace all, all, everybody and everything as one family, a brotherhood and sisterhood of humankind. Wouldn't that create a clear pathway 
to a world that works for everyone? With open hearts and open minds, we could let down our guard and let the other in, recognizing that in truth, there is no other. Just God experiencing itself in endless variations of form. Got that? From our reading this morning, which was read beautifully by Genesia, we heard, and I'm quoting, I evolve out of all pettiness into all tolerance. I grow out of all ignorance into all truth, end quote. How can we begin to do this? The reading also told us that when you plant a seed, the seed has to die for a plant to appear. And those of us who plant anything know that, right? If you plant a mango seed, the mango seed disappears when the plant sprouts. To make the analogy, if seeds represent our thoughts planted in the soil of our mind, whatever we experience in the world is first established in our consciousness, then and only then is demonstrated in the outer. Whatever we have in the outer, be it physical, mental, emotional, come from us, not to us. If the experience is not so great, perhaps somewhere in our history, a seed idea was planted, or more precisely, a weed idea. In order to plant new seeds, the weed must be uprooted. Now that's not as simple as it sounds. If those weeds were embedded by parents or other authority figures, or even just persons that we admire and trust, there could be a lot of guilt associated with destroying those weeds, distasteful and ugly as they may be. <laughs> if it's any consolation, everybody at some point has feelings of guilt, self-hatred, or at least self-criticism. But remember, all of it started just a thought, and any thought can be changed. If we're willing to let go of our stinking thinking, release all contributors, and choose forgiveness and love instead. My encounter with the lady in Greece did not come from wanting to analyze, to understand her or her culture, or who, what, or why she was doing what she was doing. It came from a genuine desire to express love and friendship, no strings attached. We both simply gave with no expectation of gain beyond sharing a few friendly minutes. You know, we are never diminished by our giving especially when the act of giving is generated from a consciousness of plenty, of having more than enough to share. If we would deliberately seek to live from an I have attitude rather than I want attitude, we would dramatically increase the ability to give and share not just physical substance, but ourselves. Joel Goldsmith, in his book, Consciousness is What I Am, which is currently being studied in a class taught by Reverend John here, by the way. Joel Goldsmith says on page 74, and I quote, living in a material state of consciousness, life is concerned with getting, achieving, attaining, all based on the fact that out here is a world of supply. How are we going to draw it to us? All of human life is dedicated to drawing to itself from out in the world. Drawing to itself knowledge, drawing to itself strength, more years of life, more health, more money, more opportunity, more property. All of human life is dedicated to acquiring. We are infinite consciousness. And what we can't find in our consciousness, we're not going to find out in the world." End quote. Now, not to, lock, not to knock <laughs> the law of attraction, but nothing comes to us that doesn't come through us. And the only way it can come through us 
is if and when we provide the clear and open channel for it to flow. Our old seed ideas of lack in any form must die in order for new seeds to take root. Our consciousness must be open, ready, and receptive to the idea we wish to experience, be that money, love, joy, connection, health, etc. Our consciousness first generates the idea which the universe, God, life responds to. Give and it shall be given to you. Affirm with me. I'll say it once and then you can repeat it. I am building a consciousness of love, light, laughter and lavish abundance which sows seeds of joy and fulfillment to bless the whole world. I am building a consciousness of love. I am building a consciousness of love. Light, laughter, and lavish abundance. Light, laughter, and lavish abundance. Which sows seeds of joy and fulfillment. Which sows seeds of joy and fulfillment. To bless the whole world. To bless the whole world. And so it is. Our Declaration of Principles states, we believe that heaven is within man and that we experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it. If then our intention is to be a light, to demonstrate unity, harmony, prosperity, love, peace, joy, we must first embody these qualities and project them into the world so that they find corresponding energies that can multiply and bring more of the same. To put it simply, if your intention is to experience joy, going around with a long face, now I help you. <laughs> that would be like repellent to any corresponding energy. Are you beginning to see how impeccably the universe operates? The creation idea is replicated ad infinitum in every living thing through every living experience. Do you got that? Creation is always taking place and we are co-creators with God, the universe, with life. It simply responds to us. Let us affirm Every moment of my life is an opportunity to start anew, to move from then to now. This moment is brand new and all is well in my world. Every moment of my life, Every moment of my life is an opportunity to start anew. Is an opportunity to start anew. To move from then to now to move from then to now. This moment is brand new. This moment is brand new. And all is well and in my world. Is well. In my world. In my world. How does it feel to say that? Wonderful. Don't answer immediately. <laughs> Sit with it for a while and be honest. Was there a fleeting thought yeah, right. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. What do you mean, all is well? Or are you thinking and feeling, I have the power to choose and create my own circumstances? Yeah. Well, you know what? Both are right. Because the universe stands ready, willing, and able to support every thought and belief we choose. The right thought, then, must be our intention if we desire to experience joy, love, abundance, world peace. Whatever we choose becomes true for us, not for the person beside you, for you. My father-in-law, who spent many years in Tanzania, would often remind us of an African proverb which says, the camel rider has his thoughts, and the camel has his too. 
In other words, we are the only thinkers in our world. Therefore, our thoughts matter. Our Declaration of Principles further states, we believe that the universal spirit, which is God, operates through a universal mind, which is the law of God, and that we are surrounded by this creative mind, which receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it. We believe in the control of conditions through the power of this mind. The real question is, are we willing to act on that belief? What is your intention? I want you to uncross your legs, get comfortable, let this meditation from Ernest Holmes help to take you to that place where you feel aware and comfortable acting on that belief. Take a deep breath and close your eyes and just listen to my voice. I shall keep the promise that I have made to myself. I shall never again tell myself that I am poor, sick, weak, or unhappy. I shall not lie to myself anymore, but shall daily speak the truth to my inner soul, telling it that it is wonderful and marvelous, that it is one with the great cause of all life, truth, power, and action. I shall whisper these things into my soul until it breaks forth into songs of joy with the realization of its limitless possibilities. I keep the promise, and so it is. Namaste.